Hey guys, it's Ross, and in this video we're going to do a fig pruning video for containers. I think I'll do a separate video for how to prune fig trees in the ground, uh, but the principles are pretty much the same. What I will say is that this is part of the fig winterization series that I've created for you guys. There's a playlist with every single video that I'm doing. If you go to my YouTube channel, scroll down, you can see that playlist and visit every single subject that I'm covering now. Um, the first video we did was a nice little plan. We planned this out in, in which order everything's going to happen, the more specific details. And then we go even more specific on each video to really fine tune this and go more in depth with this. The next step after pruning is to put them away. So we're almost done. Uh, we are going to be talking about my in-ground trees and how I'm going to protect them. Those are going to be in later videos. A lot of you have been asking me when am I going to do that? It's going to be in December sometime after Thanksgiving. Uh, here we are the week before Thanksgiving, the weekend before Thanksgiving, and we're doing some pruning. So this tree here is called Petite Albique, and the first thing you need to know about pruning fig trees specifically is that the fig fruits on New Year's growth, at least the, the varieties that I've chosen, they're common figs. I don't grow San Pedro types, which fruit on last year's wood. This one here will fruit on last year's wood. It will put out a Brava crop. But for the most part, I want to focus on main crop production. And this one in particular is really productive. It's a Violette de Bordeaux type. Puts out fruit for me consistently every year. It does a really nice job. And the, the limbs on this tree um, don't like to go out in every which way direction. They really uh, will put out these nice thick limbs for me. And those thick limbs are really key for someone in my area to get optimal production. Even if you live in uh, Arizona, I could argue that because you're growing them in containers, you really want to make sure that you're limiting the number of branches. And this doesn't really make sense to a lot of people because if you limit the number of branches, you have less leaves. Less leaves is less photosynthesis, right? Less energy. But with fig trees, because the fruit forms on the new wood, we want to make sure that the wood is as strong as we humanly possibly can make it. So by limiting the number of branches, we're getting less branches, but thicker, stronger growth earlier in the season. This is extremely important. So with that knowledge in mind, okay, seven gallon size pot, I want to limit this tree to no more than seven fruiting branches. That's the rule. So with that knowledge in mind, I'm gonna be pruning my trees with, the, with the, the vision of next year. If I don't think about next year when I'm pruning, what am I doing? So we're gonna do a nice little shape here, and you can see the tree already has a nice shape. So this branch came out, and this branch came out. This was here last year, and this was here last year. See how we have this nice little trunk up from the base, and it branches out in three different directions. I think this is a really nice way of training them. Train them as a single stem plant. That's extremely important when growing them in containers. The energy can then be directed into one trunk and I think there's better results that way. Now, I like the shape of this, right? This year, however, we got some branches that came up and they just grew straight up in the air, which is nice. I don't mind that. But these shoots, because they grew straight up in the air versus one that's kind of sideways, these were much more vigorous and they need a lot more pruning because of that. So we're gonna take the height of these, these branches here down. Um, you know, I like this branch, I like this branch, and I like this branch. So I wanna keep that structure going. But what I need to do to get this to branch out, because if I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this, this is already branched out. And I'm gonna keep this. It's got some weird stuff going on. So to get a nice form, and this is a nice little triangle, you can do a square, right? So in the triangle, you got three sides, the, the three corners of the triangle, one in each corner. In a square, you have four different corners and you have each you know, direction going into those corners. So that's how I like to look at it. For this one here, it's pretty simple. I think we're just gonna take off the apical bud. That's it. What does that do? Well, it kind of frees up the auxin in the plant. The auxin suppresses lower growth. So by cutting off that hormone, 
we're basically letting this tree branch out next year. Now, if I leave this tip up here, here's another interesting uh, thing I've learned is that if you leave the tips that the leaves would then continue to grow out of, that's a really strong growth point. And if you leave those tips on, you will get an earlier crop by probably a week or two. Um, but for me, I'm mainly pruning for wood right now and for shape. So if I'm doing that and I'm trying to trade cuttings or sell cuttings, I'm just gonna get this thing back and prune it. But in normal circumstances, if I'm going for optimal production, I would leave a lot of these tips on, as many as I could. So let's bring this back because this branch here is going to branch out real nicely. We like this. This branch here, I'm not sure entirely how much I like this because I like this branch. So what I could do is instead I could cut this off here, cut this entire length of this branch off, and then I could bring this back and then this would branch out from here, right? So I could do that as well, and I think that's what I will do. So we're going to cut this off. And when you guys make cuts, make sure you label your cuttings. I'm putting them down on the pot that they belong to, and then as soon as we're done this video, we're going to put them in, in bags that are labeled. You can see here, we're going to bring this down all the way quite far. And one little tip I think I want to mention here in this particular moment is see how the height of this branch versus the height of this branch this is a bit higher what that means is this branch here is going to have more of that auxin that hormone that suppresses the lower growth so if this is higher it's actually going to suppress a lot of this inadvertently right so what we need to do is kind of focus on getting this to the exact height that we want. I think I'm gonna cut it here because I have a bud that's unfortunately gonna go out this way, but on the back, I have a bud that will come out this way and maybe a lower branch down here. Maybe this bud, I'll, I'll select this one. So that's the nice part about figs is that they love to grow and grow in the beginning of the season. They put out so many new buds that you can kind of be choosy and select which ones you want. So from here, we're gonna have two. And from here we're going to have two. The only thing left to do now is handle this section of the triangle. We're going to take this little small thing off. That's going to do absolutely nothing for me. And then this branch here, I think I like this a lot less than I do this. Because this one here is coming out too far of the triangle, right? We're trying to constrict this triangle because if this tree is growing right next to this one, I mean literally in the season, we have it isolated for a reason, but in the season, this tree is like on top of the other one. So I wanna make sure that this thing isn't going out too far, it's not acting up. Control your children, people. And then <laughs> we're basically gonna just bring this down and that's it. And I think I'll take even another cutting off of here and that'll be it. It's got a weird shape now, it does. But I could, if I wanted to, I could take this back just a hair. But essentially the, the goal and the vision in mind for this tree next year, again, this is gonna branch out two branches. I'm gonna select two branches. From this branch will be two branches. And from this branch will be two branches. For a total of six fruiting branches in a seven gallon container, you're allowed one fruiting branch per gallon of soil and I kid you not each of these six branches that I'm gonna allow to grow will be covered from head to toe in fruit because I've limited them and that's the only reason so that's pretty much pruning guys it's really that simple you just need to know the principles get the shape right get some nice airflow in here I like to get an open center one, so that these, these branches, these leaves are quite large on a fig, right? Usually bigger than your hand. If they're kind of shading each other out, that's not good. Also, the airflow is really great for eliminating rust. For those of you who live in humid environments, we get rust here. We want to eliminate that as much as we can by giving this tree an open center, more airflow, on and on and on.